Nick Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy and ascension forecast for Sunday, September 1st to Saturday, September 7th. Okay, so last week we were wrapping up the final week of August, which of course had the 6-8 vibration, the change, the transformation needed in the finer details of our physical realm in order to break free of those old chapters and actually start fresh and building a brand new foundation. The last week of August overlapped with the first week of Virgo season. And of course, we've definitely been in a different mood, a different attitude, brought back to reality in a certain kind of way. But our headspace is still all over the place, seeing as Mercury, ruler of this Virgo season, of course, just came out of his retrograde there on the 28th. Prior to the 28th, of course, we had a lot of head pressure building up, not only because of Virgo energy, but because we had our last quarter moon pop off in Gemini energy. Of course, Mercury rules over the Gemini energy as well. That last quarter moon definitely put things into perspective, definitely brought out new information, new details for us to kind of process and reframe and restructure in our lives. And we've been focused on the issues, on the problems, on the blockages, on the challenges, because of course the Virgo energy needs to focus on those things in order to fix, heal, and repair them. We just had Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, finish her transit throughout the Virgo energy. She moved into her rulership in Libra energy on the 29th. We're still adjusting to both Mercury going direct, to Venus now in her rulership. We have a lot going on. We're in the final days of August here as I'm coming to you live here Friday evening. And of course, as we shift into September, we have Uranus and Pluto on the move. We'll talk about that in just a second. So, August has been a very turbulent time. We had a lot of inner reflection to do where our heart and our head was concerned. We can thank the bulk of Leo season for that. And of course, Mercury's retrograde through that Leo energy as well for those particular challenges and obstacles to really reprocess, restructure, reanalyze, reevaluate matters of the heart. And of course, now that we are wrapping up August and diving into September, which is coming very, very quickly, we will be shifting into a new vibration, a new life lesson, a new chapter. We have on the very first day of September, the moon in Leo, again, reminding us of the boldness, the bravery, the courage that we tapped into throughout Leo season to do what we need to do in order to chase our dreams, in order to fulfill certain missions, certain purposes within our own soul contracts, the Virgo energy helping us to kind of fine tune the smaller details of our day to day lives to free us up from some of the roles, responsibilities, obligations and commitments that are weighing very heavily on on our headspace so that we can go ahead, plan and strategize a new path forward towards new goals, new visions, new dreams. September 1st, we are going to have Uranus go retrograde. That is definitely going to be a little bit of a doozy that we are going to continue to work through from now until the end of this year. Pluto, the great transformer, also going retrograde, but creeping back into that Capricorn energy on the exact same day. And of course, the minute that we bust into that September energy and we start kind of bringing certain chapters, certain endings to a close, we are definitely going to be removing certain aspects out of our lives and quickly filling up that void, that space with something new, something improved, something better, something more alignment with our heart space than ever before. We will be in the new moon window here very shortly as the new moon in Virgo is preparing to pop off here on the second. And of course, we are wrapping up Mars's time through Gemini energy. We will see Mars move into Cancer energy here on the fourth. So there is a lot going on this week. I'm not going to lie to you. September is a very important month. It always is. We have to get our shit together. Virgo season really promotes that. We don't have a lot of time to be in power and in control of our lives before we're thrown into eclipse season. Before I kind of get into ranting and raving, 
let me just address a couple of things on my homework list. First of all, I want to start with the thank yous. I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for liking, for sharing, for commenting, for dropping beautiful emojis in the comment section below, making it a very aesthetically pleasing page to kind of move through. I want to thank you for your continued love and support. I want to thank those of you that have jumped over to Patreon, even as a free member. At least y'all are getting notifications now when I do post content. And of course, as a free member, as we move into September 1st, you will have access to August's Zodiac Forecast. Of course, that is paid content for my VIPs over there. But as a free member, you get to sample that particular information. And hopefully, it will not only show you where it is that you're in alignment with the energies, but it will encourage you to really tap into what September Zodiac Forecasts are all about. I'm currently, as Friday evening is arriving here, I am still currently working on that. Y'all know me by now, a little bit of a procrastor type of mood and attitude. So I do expect that the finality, the completion point of all those Zodiac forecasts will be available for download either individually from my website here tomorrow on Saturday, or you can access all 12 over on my Patreon. So I have been working on those Zodiac forecasts. I just, I'm not, I'm not even going to get in the complaining mood and attitude, but let me just say when we have brand new months beginning on top of major energy shifts back to back Uranus and Pluto, I'm looking at you on top of a brand new moon that we are diving into. I got a lot on my plate. I am kind of running myself thin. I do apologize for my voice if it is a little bit more raspier and scratchier than normal. I am just pushing through it and hopefully, um, you know, if my previous life has, has taught me anything is that I work best under pressure and even though I wish I wasn't a procrastinator, somehow, some way, I usually always get things done. So it will be coming at you over the next couple of days. There is tons of content coming at you for the beginning of September here. It is a really, really, I'm going to say disciplined month for us to get in a different mood, a different attitude, a different focus, a different mindset. We are going to be shake, rattled and rolled in many different ways, a very turbulent month. So put on your energetic helmets as we enter into September. Of course, all of those energy forecasts are coming at you. That should provide you a little bit of clarity on where these particular energies are manifesting in your life. But I really do recommend that you download the Virgo Season E-Guide if you haven't already. That is the energetic Bible, so to speak, to keep you aligned and ahead of the game so that you can roll instead of being dragged. Virgo Season, definitely more connected to the physical realm, to the physical reality of things. We are very much taking a good look at our physical lives, discerning what needs to stay, what needs to go, what we could do better, what we can improve upon. And it again, all starts in the mental plane. Side note, I did procrastinate on my booking calendar again for September. I do apologize. I am going to make that available first and foremost to my Patreon members to kind of get first dibs on the spots available for one-on-one -on -one sessions with me throughout the month of September. I do plan on making that calendar public probably the third or fourth. So give a little bit of time to my VIPs to snag those spots and then it will become public as we enter into this brand new week. So with all of that out of the way, I am going to dive right into a little bit of information on what we can expect coming at us, especially with the manifestation of some of these energies in our physical form. So let's just talk about the fact that Virgo season, it's an earth season. We have Uranus going retrograde in Taurus energy, in earth energy. We have Pluto retrograding back into Capricorn in earth energy. So there's a lot of earth coming at us. What does that mean? It means that we're going to feel heavy. We're going to feel weighted. We have no choice but to be in our physical bodies, in our physical forms, in our physical environments, because of course the major changes that need to take place now are in our physical realities. The new version of self that is just newly kind of emerged that we've been kind of anchoring in, becoming more familiar with, 
the new version of self is still living in the old realm, the old reality that the old version of self has created. Of course, I'm going to encourage you to take a listen to all of those energy forecasts that I put out there for all of these particular events. But just know Uranus, the great awakener who likes to disrupt things, likes to shake us up, likes to show us where change absolutely needs to happen. We have a lot of resistance in doing all of those things because of the fixed earth energy of Taurus. So we are going to spend the last little bit of 2024 now realizing where it is that we've grown too attached to keeping things the same in our physical realm, where relationships are concerned, routines are concerned, resources are concerned, finances are concerned. There is going to be a major shakeup, major wake up in each and every single one of our lives in order to illuminate where it is that we've been doing the same old, same old, because it was comfortable, it was familiar, it was predictable. We did at one point create this little realm in reality as our comfort zone, but now it's acting more as a prison. It is keeping us stuck constantly revisiting the old version of self, the old aspects that the old version of self was very, very energetically connected to. We are no longer those people. So much has changed. Our heart space has changed. Our head space has changed. Circumstances have changed. And now we have a new path, a new plan, a new strategy, even though you may still be con- Used as F about the details, we know that we can't stay here. We know that we can no longer experience, no longer tolerate certain situations, circumstances, and aspects here in our physical realm. Thus, where we need to cut the cord, detach from these particular aspects in order to set ourselves free. Now, on the greater, grander global stage, Uranus retrograde and Taurus energy, first of all, is going to totally flip the script on the financial system. Now, we've been waiting for these changes in the financial system. A lot of people excited about it. A lot of people not so much. Doesn't matter. It's out of our control. We have to evolve and we have to uh, essentially accept the fact that we need to roll instead of be dragged. Not all of the changes, not all of the advancements in technology are things to be fearing. We are a species, a, a collective that need to evolve, especially where technology is concerned, seeing that Pluto, who is currently dipping back into the Capricorn energy, will be moving back into the Aquarius energy in November. We are set up in that Aquarius energy until 2044. That Aquarius energy, yes, is returning the power to the people, returning us to sovereign beings, but also pushing for technological advances. If you think that we are the smartest species that ever, ever existed, you are fooled. Please refrain from that train of thought. We do need technology, specifically AI, in order to bridge the gap to the next chapter of the evolution of where humans need to be. It does not need to be fear and doom and gloom, okay? We just need to collectively get our shit together, get focused on how to use these particular technologies to evolve, to advance in the right kind of ways, and of course, remove the evildoers out of power. That's my next rant. Hold on for that. We have Uranus in this Taurus energy. The Taurus energy is Mother Earth. It is the physical realm. It is everything that we see in this, let's call it matrix system, okay? So first of all, yes, finances are going to be major, major impact. We are going to see major changes in agriculture. Again, resources. We in weather patterns are going to see major lightning storms, whether they are organic or man-made at this point really doesn't matter. The earth is going to receive more electrical votes through Uranus's retrograde and Taurus this time around than ever before, which means that earthquakes, okay, eruptions, wild repercussions of the domino effect that happens when there is a huge electrical impulse coming into Earth's atmosphere where water is concerned, tsunamis are concerned, we're moving into hurricane season. There's going to be all kinds of wild card weather Okay, this is really going to help break up the earth. Now, when I say break up the earth, I mean figuratively and, well, realistically, there's going to be a change in our earth system. The, I'm going to call it Uranian lightning bolts 
not only come down from the higher realms of intelligence in order to push us into new levels of awareness and consciousness, but it also kind of charges up Gaia, Mother Earth herself, which of course, reminder, we're going through the ascension process because Mother Earth herself is going through an ascension process. We have to accept the term, the fact, if you will, that we are in comparison to Mother Earth, the parasite that rides off of her back, okay? We have no clue what to do about it. We don't have a choice in it. We have to evolve. If you're not evolving, you are being removed from this matrix system. Thus, Saturn being in Pisces energy at this particular juncture retrograde. I talked about Saturn moving into Pisces about a year ago and how there was going to be major removal of people off of this earth plane because karmically speaking they are not willing to grow they're not willing to evolve and in some cases they've completed their life mission their life chapter they cannot go on any further saturn and pisces energy a huge wave of death and when i talk about waves we also have to consider the fact that waves happen when there is a shift in tectonic plates which is taurus energy earth energy what creates that? Well, electrical charges. Where's that coming from? Well, be the guest. Is it coming from outside of us? Is it coming from inside Mother Earth? Is it coming from all around, from the man-made electrical systems that we've created? Take your choice. It doesn't matter where it's coming from. It's happening. And it is essentially reshaping the Earth. And it's reshaping the vibration of the Earth. And it's reshaping the physical surface of the Earth. And it's reshaping who it is that we are existing on the Earth. Just, just matter of fact, that's what we can expect. And in our own individual lives, we are going to see that mirrored effect take place in our routines, in our relationships, in our resources, in our finances as well. And so we can expect from now to the end of this year, and again, we're still in the year of eight. So it is about walking the walk and talking the talk. And it is about having control over your mental plane, over your heart space in order to not react to what is happening in the world around you instead respond from the higher self understanding that everything is an orchestrated event everything is happening exactly as it should good bad or otherwise in order to create the end result that of course has been divinely scripted for many many moons we have to get to where it is that humanity needs to be and in order to do that sometimes you need some not so nice things to happen in order to disrupt the system that's exactly what uranus retrograde and taurus is doing is disrupting the systems that are keeping things the same old same old way again fixed earth energy Let's talk about Pluto for a second. Pluto is the great transformer through the death and destruction process. You have to have an ending in order for a beginning to take place. We've been in this Capricorn energy since 2008, deconstructing and destabilizing the power and control that a small group of people have over the earth plane, have over humanity at this particular point in time. This is the last time that Pluto will ever be in Capricorn energy for our existence anyways. Again, Pluto takes 248 years to go through all of the signs of the zodiac wheel, thus why the US is getting hit right now because the US is going through their Pluto return. Definitely death and destruction, definitely a shift in the power, definitely reshaping how it is that we will see that particular country in moving on and moving forward. The point is, is that Pluto, the great transformer, he's moving back into the Capricorn energy, sitting at that 29th critical crisis degree. It is very karmic in nature. Saturn rules over the Capricorn energy and Saturn is currently clearing out a 30 year cycle. Again, with water, again, with belief system, again, with the deconstruction of spirituality and religion, thus bringing a whole group of people to their collective ending here on this earth plane and returning them back to source and back to spirit. Capricorn energy is the physical form. It is the foundation, the structures that we have built in society, in our own individual lives. And it is the power and control that we have over these particular aspects. Thus, why we are trying to activate our creator energies. Now, Capricorn energy is a cardinal sign and cardinal energies means that we are about to initiate a totally different path, a totally different direction. And this path this direction is damage and destruction in order to basically 
bring the existing forms that we've been working on deconstructing down to a pile of rubble. We have from now until November to clean up the mess of the old world, to clean up the mess of the old realm, the old reality that the old version of self, and in this case, the old power structures had created for us. The Aquarius energy that we will be moving into permanently in November is returning the power back to the people. It gives us an opportunity to stabilize from the changes from that we are currently initiating by removing, releasing, purging, completing certain chapters, certain topics, certain themes. That Aquarius energy is giving the power back to the people, is restructuring society, is giving us our sovereignty back because we will be reaching new levels of awareness. How do we do that? We do that through wisdom, through knowledge, through information. We are in a time of disclosure. Everybody hears the word of disclosure. They automatically think of aliens. Then they jump into that whole tangent. That is not what disclosure is. Disclosure is realizing that there's an admittance now by the powers that be that they have essentially corrupted us from the absolute beginning. We are seeing the truth in politics. We're seeing the truth in government. We're seeing the truth in healthcare, in finance. We are seeing the truth of our world, how it was created, who actually created it. There are so many different avenues. There are so many different rabbit holes that you could fall down at this time. Thus, why spiritual psychosis is at an all time high. Again, thank you, Saturn, retrograde and Pisces for that. We are deconstructing the old ways of living, the old ways of believing, the old ways of understanding, the old ways of creating. Again, may I remind you, early 2025, Saturn will be moving into Aries energy. That is a fresh new start, a brand new beginning where we have to build, we have to create something different out of the rubble, out of the space that we're currently clearing out and Pluto and Uranus are currently helping us do that. So the cardinal energy of Capricorn is of course putting us on a different path to deconstruct the old form, the old ways of living so that we can free the path, free the space up for us to actually move on into something new, creating something better that not only looks good, not only feels good, but returns the power back to the people. So there is a lot of earth energies and earth energies make us feel heavy, make us feel weighted. It could definitely trigger a certain, let's call it form of depression. Although depression is just your physical body's way of saying that the ego avatar, the role in which you've been playing needs to die in order for your true, real, raw, authentic self to take the lead. That's what we've been doing here in 2024 is whittling away and peeling back the layers of the fake facade in order to illuminate the authentic heart space that our soul, our spirit needs us to express through the physical form, through the physical avatar, through the physical meat suit. But the earth energy definitely going to put it on heavy, put it on thick. We have to take a good look at our physical realms. We're in Virgo season. Virgo energy needs us to identify the problems in order for us to fix them, heal them, repair them, improve them. It all starts with our mental plane. It all starts with our mental health. It all starts what we focus on. We have to examine the bad habits. We have to examine our past patterns, our past behaviors. We have to do better. We have to be better. It's also an earth energy that is ruled over by Mercury. Mercury just came out of his retrograde. He is just creeping along, trying to get his bearings. He is just still pushing through matters of the heart, reframing, restructuring what we just went through, how we can use it to empower us instead of making us feel weak and raw and vulnerable. We are building ourselves up but the Virgo energy is essentially where we get our shit together, where we get rid of the old, where we do better with what is still existence and where it is that we can bring in the new. This is giving us a better foundation to detox, detox on the mind, the body, the soul. Now detox, I want to talk about the detox for just a second. You better get yourself in order. I mean, mind, body, soul. I mean, get your house in order. I mean, get your head in order. I mean, 
understand that we are about to move into the next couple of months where there's going to be another orchestrated event attacking our health, attacking our mental health if you're not strong enough to see through the bullshit. And you best believe that the Virgo energy that focuses in on healing the physical body, the physical form and the mental plane needs to be at its cleanest, primest state in order to survive this next challenge, this next chapter. I am not speaking out of fear. I am not speaking out of anything other than the fact that we have not been taking very good care of ourselves. We have not been doing what we know that we need to do to protect our energy, to protect our mental health, protect our emotions, to protect our physical health. And we need to be preventative here because let me just say, some of us is going to be too late when it actually comes crashing down for you to start doing the work. You need to be doing the work. We're in boot camp. We've been training for this for lifetimes. We have another thing coming at us here in a couple of months. You're already seeing little glimpses of it, I'm sure, out in the real world. We are going to be thrown back into, let's call it the Truman Show again, to see whether or not we've actually learned anything, to see how we respond instead of react, and to see what we're going to actually do about it. The Virgo energy is the detox. It's where we get shit in order, mind, body, and soul. That's what we're doing here. And the Virgo energy needs us to get organized really fast, needs us to put the areas of our life that have been crazy and chaotic into a state of order, needs us to take better care of ourselves instead of overextending our energy, our effort to other people. Now, does that mean to be selfish? Absolutely not. But we all know that we can't be pouring from a half-ass empty cup. And many of us don't even know what it feels like to have a full cup and y'all are out still filling up the cups of other people thinking that your I'm going to call it good service, your good nature, disposition, your want, need, and desire to help other people is actually going to save you. They are not going to show up for you when you are on your last leg. And let me tell you, if you do not spend the time to fill up your own damn cup, you will be depleted going through this next chapter of the spiritual war. So a detox. Okay. So what do we expect from the physical form? We expect colds. We expect flus, we expect allergies, we expect sniffles, we expect coughing. Why? Because there's phlegm in our bodies, there's mucus in our bodies. Mucus is the number one contributing factor to illness. If you have an acidic body, you need to get your body alkaline before it's too late. We have been working on better habits. We have been working on taking care of ourselves. The way we so easily show up and take care of other people will let me tell you that we are really going to get judged in a big way, probably by judging ourselves, by really seeing how greatly we are affected when the next chapter of those particular life lessons come at us and how easily we fall. Okay, we have to be walking the walk, talking the talk, constantly building ourselves up. The physical form is the physical vessel that allows your God, Christ energy to channel through you. If you're not doing the emotional work, you're going to have ascension symptoms. They are going to take you out. You're going to be debilitated. If you have not been doing the mental work, you are going to move into a state of psychosis. It's going to be a scary thing for you. If you have not been doing the physical work, you are definitely going to have a weakened immune system and you are definitely going to be kicked when you are down. And if you haven't been doing the spiritual work, you best believe that you are going to be attacked by the dark force energies that are getting unleashed here in just a couple of months. I am not speaking from a fear mongering type of perspective. I'm trying to keep it real. The Virgo energy needs you to clean out the vessel that houses this vibration, this frequency needs you to have free flowing meridians in order for the, the energy to channel through you correctly. It is going to be too late when you find yourself in a certain situation here in the months to come to start doing the work that you should have been doing essentially for the past five years. Okay. Now, does that mean, oh, okay, well, I, I'm not even going to bother. No, that means that you better hurry up and put yourself on an accelerated boot training type of situation in order to get your ass in gear. It's time to get our shit together. It's time to get organized. It's time to purify, detox, and cleanse the mind, the body, the soul. That phlegm, that mucus stores 
old pain, old trauma, old DNA, old light codes. We got to get it out of our body before it causes a lot of sickness, a lot of disease. Again, the acidic body, by not eating the right things, by having too much stress in your body, by not having the right kind of, let's call it program to bring the good things into your awareness. It is more than just diet. It's what you feed yourself as far as entertainment and information. It is the inner dialogue, the inner narrative. It is the heart space. It is the emotion. It is the mind, body, and soul equation that needs to be balanced, needs to be fine-tuned, needs to be strong enough to house the energy, the light that is coming into our physical form, preparing us for this next hurrah, this next challenge, this next chapter in the spiritual battle. So that means that we may have cold chills, we may have sniffs, we may have coughing fits. Why? To get the gunk out. Maybe you're going to have a bout of depression in order for you to realize where your negative ass narrative continues to create the same situations and circumstances over and over and over again because you haven't changed your mind, you haven't changed your emotions. Your belief system, what you believe is true, what you believe you deserve, what you believe you are worthy of dictates your physical circumstances. If you don't like where it is that you're at and you can't do anything about it in the physical realm, change the way you're looking at it. You have the option to orient to a lower vibration and frequency or a higher vibration and frequency every second that you have a thought that you choose to pour your attention into something, into someone or into a particular outlook. We have to change our habits. We have to change our routines. We have to change our physical environment, our physical form. How do you do that? Well, let's start with putting our houses in order. You've heard me talk about this before. It's time to declutter. It's time to purge. It's time to purify. It's time to detox the physical home. Your physical environment mirrors back to you how your inner realm is doing. If you're in a state of chaos, your home is probably very cluttered, very disorganized. One way to kind of change the inner realm through external influences is to get your environment, your home in order. Trust me when I say that all you have to do is switch a couple of things around in your environment and suddenly you have a totally different vibe take over your home. This is the energy work that we have to start doing a little bit more regularly. This is the energy work, the spiritual practices that we have to be doing on a regular basis in order to stay strong, to keep our boundaries strong as we move into this next chapter. So we are likely going to experience a lot of fluctuations in our headspace, in our heart space, in the physical form. Because of all the earth energy, there's going to be a lot of knee pain, a lot of leg pain, cramping, if you will, Charlie horses. Maybe you're going to roll your ankle. Maybe you don't know where you're going and therefore you're trapping all that fear in your knees. There's going to be a lot of lower back pain, a lot of lower back discomfort. Why? Pluto's retrograde. Pluto rules over the egoic programming and conditioning that is deep-seated in our psyche. That is our survival programming. We have to feel that discomfort. We have to feel the pain in order to turn it into power. That's what Pluto is helping us do. How do we do that? We become aware of our physical attachments. How do we do that? We allow Uranus to show us now retrograde and Taurus energy where it is that we're overly connected to intertwined possessive of keeping things the same old, same old in our physical environment. That is definitely going to trigger a lot of fear, a lot of doubt, a lot of insecurity. You often hear me talk about needing to take a leap of faith, removing things, cutting people, places, things out of your life, entrusting that the universe has a greater, grander plan will fill that void with something better. If you continue to sit around, continue to do the same old, same old, praying for change, but not doing anything about it until opportunity knocks on the door and presents something better in order for you to feel Feel better about releasing the things that you currently no longer want to keep in your existence, then I'm sorry, my friend, that day will never come. A leap of faith is needed. You have to trust yourself and trust the universe 
to remove the aspects out of your physical realm to create the space for the universe to deliver something better in the place of the things that again you're no longer a vibratory match for that was the old version of self you're not that version of self anymore therefore you can't continue to walk around that in the old realm the old world in the old relationship dynamics in the old job in the old career in the old home that the old version of self once had built out of the dreams out of the wants out of the desires that again have come to full fruition and now have passed this is a detoxing phase we are closing out chapters take a good look at how many older planets are retrograde we have to do the inner work to build ourselves up to a point of confidence to a point of bravery to a point of awareness where when these planets start going direct we know what we have to remove we know what we have to do we know what we have to pursue so that negative narrative on top of the lower back pain on top of the leg cramping because that's where we store fear in our physical bodies that is definitely going to slow us down we're going to feel a lot of cracking a lot lot of rigidity again waking up in the middle of the night with restless leg syndrome like we just want to cut certain parts of our legs off because of the tremors because of the vibrations in our legs dance it out okay you need to create movement with a in alignment with a positive mind frame in order to get the energy unblocked and out of the physical form does it feel good to experience all that pain? Absolutely not. But the fear, the doubt, the insecurity, especially for your long-term goals, your long-term visions, your long-term dreams. Again, Capricorn energy is being aspected by Pluto's retrograde. We have Cancer energy who sits across from the Capricorn energy. They represent the axis of safety and security. Mars, the god of war, will be moving through this Cancer energy here very shortly. And heads up, we will eventually go retrograde and we will be revisiting a lot of the topics and themes that we are constantly trying to change and transform at this particular juncture at the beginning of 2025. Again, another reason why I encourage you to listen to all the forecasts, to download that Virgo season e-guide, to capture what is going on now with Uranus, with Pluto, with Mars, because we are going to be revisiting these energies at the beginning of 2025. So yeah, we have to be illuminated to where it is that we're holding fear, where it is that we're not trusting ourselves, where it is that we're hesitant to make the changes that we know that we need to make. That's the only way that we can flip the script. We got to get real and raw and vulnerable with ourselves before we're able to change our mind, change our emotions, and therefore get in alignment, mind, body, and soul to take the actions, to make the moves that we are resisting in making, even though we've been praying for them. So many people want to have the details ironed out of the goal, the vision, the dream. So many people want to have a well executed plan ahead of them. Yes, I know we're in Virgo energy. I know it's hard to not really understand where it is that we're going from here. But the thing of it is, is that right now we're in a removal releasing stage just as much as we are a building and initiating stage. And we have to remove one aspect and fill it with something better. We have to remove the old and fill it with something new. This is how we get organized. And yes, our heads are going to just be pressurized. If you didn't feel that vice grip pressure over this last week, congratulations. You're one of the very many few that weren't totally debilitated by the head pressure. You want to talk about the nausea. You want to talk about the queasiness that comes with Virgo season. Our nerves in our digestive system are plentiful. We worry. We are anxious. We are perfectionist in this Virgo energy. We're very hard on ourselves. That creates a disruption in our our nerves in our gut making us not feel so hot okay the head pressure is going to continue we have dizziness we have ear ringing we have moments where suddenly the whole world picks up and 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 kind of angles and and shifts and we're seeing things sideways we are going to have light sensitivity really affect our eyes and our vision we are going to have vision disruptions i will tell you i had another situation circumstance and scenario where i went temporarily blind okay if you are a seer if you are able to have some sort of channeling ability see vision see future interpret information from higher realms of intelligence i know that you're experiencing these things too the influx of energy 
energies are so great. The physical form has not expanded to the strength needed in order to house the information and details that we are currently receiving. Thus migraines, thus dizziness, thus head pressure, thus temporary blindness in some cases, which I do not enjoy. It does not feel good. However, the vision of ourselves, the vision of our future is changing. And therefore the vision is changing because what is going on in the spiritual realm manifests in the physical body. Therefore, our eyes are going to be sore, tired. They're going to be blurry. There's going to be visual disruptions. We are going to see different light patterns. We're going to see different orbs. That is part of the upgrade of the sensory system that we're currently going through. We are going to have those downloads pop off, which most people, you know, have that ear ringing sensation. Whoop, there's new information coming in, new data packet being kind of opened up, the zip file being accessed. Those ear ringings are going to get very strong, almost so much that you are debilitated in that moment where you cannot even keep your eyes open that those pinging sounds are so loud. It will be a temporary disruption of not being able to hear your physical environment. That's how strong these downloads are. Again, Virgo season is a point where we reach new levels of awareness, new levels of consciousness, and that does not come without some sort of fluctuation in our sensory system. So we can expect all of those things to really be popping off. We can expect there to be some situations, some circumstances that pop off, especially because we're moving into the new moon in Virgo. There's going to be challenging information. There's going to be new information, new details that's totally going to wreck your brain. Our brains are tired, but why can't we sleep? Well, that's because we're overactive in the astral realm as well. We are receiving the insights in the astral realm that our physical bodies aren't capable of handling at this particular point in time due to the volume of the electricity that we have to receive that would absolutely debilitate our physical form. We're receiving that in the astral realm. The dream content is whack. Many of us will be experiencing dreams, flashbacks to our old schools that we grew up in, that we went to school in, our old homes that we grew up in, that we kind of, you know, learned life through. Why? Because this is the classroom that our soul has chosen here on this earth plane in order to play out the pain and the trauma that we've accumulated from our incarnations, from this life, from previous lives, everywheres of the sort. And when you dream of certain facilities, such as old schools, old homes, we have to revisit the foundation of our upbringing, the foundation of our education. We are going through a new, again, I've been calling it the exam chapter. We're going through this new level of exam, of testing to see if we can walk the walk and talk the talk. We are about to celebrate our quote unquote graduation from this particular, let's call it chapter. May I remind you, we're about to be catapulted into eclipse season. May I remind you that that eclipse season begins in Pisces energy. That is karmic in nature. That is soul contracts. That is multiple incarnations of pain and trauma accumulated in our bodies, in our DNA, in our memory, in our aura. And we have to do a deep purge, cleansing that particular part of self, preparing our physical vessels to house more intelligence than ever before. And right now our physical forms are not strong enough. Thus the energy, the effort from our team in the other realms and the other dimensions contacting us through sleep, through the astral realm, through different dimensions, giving us some cryptic content for us to sort through because the Virgo energy right now has the ability to unzip those data packets, unzip those files, make sense of everything. It is very much connecting the dots, very much seeing how everything connects to reveal the greater grander picture we are definitely having some adjustments in our sleep situation and circumstance pay attention to what is coming through pay attention to the dreamscape pay attention to who is showing up pay attention to the time frame that it is taking you back to there is a lot of information there that needs to be unearthed in order to connect the dots to make sense of where it is that we're coming from and where it is that we need to go now 
The levels of awareness can add a lot of pressure to our head. We can be brilliant one moment and have brain farts the next. That's just part of the process. We have to be kind with this process. It's not easy because, of course, the Virgo energy has us highly critical, super judgmental, especially when it comes to ourselves. The level of perfectionism that we expect ourselves to be operating at at all times is an absolute delusion. We cannot do it. We have to, again, change the parameters of our expectations of self. Not only the expectations of others, but the expectations of self. Let me also plant this seed in your mind. To have expectations is to be setting yourself up for disappointment. We have to learn to just be. There is no right and wrong. There is just options. Again, this is like, you know, a role playing game. If you're playing a video game, did you really make a mistake by choosing the side quest to go save the little girl from the tower? Or did you make the wrong decision? It's not a wrong decision, it's just a detour. This is the kind of mind frame that we now have to be leaning more into because the dualistic polarity of right and wrong is creating the depression, creating the expectation, creating the funk that is contributing to the spiritual psychosis that is currently going on that is wiping people out, okay? I am not trying to make light of it. It's a very serious situation. There is too much information out there and not enough time for people to integrate that information. That's why we have to be careful with technology. Yes, it's a great thing. We have connection to each other. We have connection to information all over the world. But if you are not taking the time to integrate that knowledge, to put it into use, to put it into practice, and you're just taking it all in, your brain is going to explode. You will find yourself in those fuzzy socks with the rubber grips on the bottom if you are not careful, okay? I am not joking about it. I am not making light of it. I am definitely not doing such, but we are reaching a very pivotal point in this particular energy ascension process where more and more people are going to lose their damn minds. Take a good look out in the world. Okay. It's been happening. It's going to continue happening. But when we move through this eclipse season, and again, this eclipse season is an effing doozy. And I say that with as much politeness as I possibly can. People are going to literally lose their damn minds. And in a lot of cases, they are going to choose to lose their lives. We don't want that to happen. We have to be doing the work. It comes down to taking care of thyself. That is what Virgo season is all about. But we have to be doing better. We have to be showing up for ourselves the way that we so easily show up for other people. And up until this particular juncture, we have been operating from an empty cup. So yes, there's going to be a new level of awareness takeover. This brings on a new mood, a new attitude. First, it's going to feel like the weight of the world is on our shoulders with all of that earth energy, with that negative ass narrative. And we can crumble under that pressure if we allow it, or we can boss up to a new level. We can dig deep. We can muster up the courage and the bravery that we need to have in order to push through this next level. This is the ending of the video game. This is the big boss, so to speak. And I'm talking talking specifically with Pluto at this particular juncture. From now until November, we have to boss up. We have to take charge. We have to be in control of our mind, our body, our soul, of our physical realms. We have to put the past behind us. We have to wrap up certain cycles. We are running out of time. We can expect disruptions. We can expect those curveballs. We can expect those unexpected events to put us in a tizzy because sometimes we need shit to hit the fan before we're open to making some choices, some decisions, some changes, some transformations that we wouldn't have made if we weren't backed into a corner to do so. Unfortunately, the human nature is to only change when we're forced to do so. And that is definitely a detriment that I think we're all working through. It is better to roll to be dragged. But in certain situations, again, our human disposition is to be backed into a corner, backed into a wall before we're actually open enough to pivot, to make a change, to make a transformation. So we're going to be struggling with all different parts of self. We're going to be struggling to find that middle ground, find that common ground. We have a lot of energy destabilizing us coming into September. We have a very short window in September where we actually can get a grip, where we actually do have power and control before we're catapulted into eclipse energy. 
So guys, I know that that was a mouthful. Um, I'm sure that my ADHD people appreciated the pace of my speech. If you need me to slow down, please adjust your settings below. I cannot slow down my mouth. It already does not keep up to the lightning train of thought in which I have. I do apologize for those of you that get a little bit overwhelmed when I do talk as fast as I just did for this whole entire hour, but I have other things to get out of my body. I have other things that I need to put my energy and attention into. And I just needed to get to the final hurrah, the final points that we need to focus on as we move through this very first week of September with all of these ever changing astro shifts coming at us. I needed to just get it out of my body. I thank you very much for holding the space for me to do so. I thank you for tuning in. I thank you for your love, for your support. I wish you nothing but the best as we kind of dive into this new chapter, this new life lesson, this new path. Of course, if you ever, ever need a little bit of a pep talk, if you need a little bit of support, drop your comments in the section below. This is a beautiful community. We will come, we will hold you up. We will hold that space for you. We will remind you that you are not alone. I thank you so much for being here. I thank you so much for sharing your time, your energy, your space with me, with our community. I send you nothing but love and we'll talk to you soon. 